we are entering the friction-free economy. The friction-free economy is here. It isn't a new idea. We've been talking about it for 20 years. The big news is that it's finally arrived. This is, you, you can do your taxes on your phone now. In fact, you can do your taxes on an Apple Watch now. I just didn't have an Apple Watch to photograph. But you can put TurboTax on there and do your whole thing from your phone or your watch. Unimaginable. A friction-free economy. What does it really mean? Here's what it means. Labor, information, and money move easily, cheaply, and almost instantly. Now, moving money, we've been able to do that pretty fast and pretty cheaply for a long time. Moving information, well, we've been able to move that pretty cheaply and fast, but the trend is still accelerating because there's so much more information that we're moving cheaply, easily, and almost instantly like all that information from your cell phone about the weather. And that fundamentally changes business models. The real change, arguably the more recent one, is labor. Labor markets always used to be local or regional. But now, increasingly, even they are global. So what you see is a screenshot from Hourly Nerd. Uh, we've had a lot of labor exchanges online, Odesk and Mechanical Turk and stuff where you could typically buy fairly fundamental tasks, lag, language translation and stuff like that. Hourly Nerd is a place where you can get high-level consultants, graduates of top business schools to do financial analysis, corporate strategy work, high-level stuff. Even that kind of labor is now moving easily, cheaply, and almost instantly. As a result, companies form new relationships with customers, workers, and owners. All those relationships are being transformed. My photo here shows a new product from Amazon. I don't know if you've seen it. This is what they call the dash button. The actual product here is a few inches long. It's got adhesive on the back so you can stick it to a wall or a device or anything like that. And you can see the button. And you can see what it says on it. Here's what it does. You hit that button. Two days later, you got a box of Tide outside your door. That's all it does. <laughs> now, when they introduced this, people made fun of it. They said, that's ridiculous. A device that does one thing, it buys one product and one product only. When you set it up, you have a quantity in there that it defaults to. You hit it, two days later, you got tied outside your door, okay? It's been a huge success. And in fact, they have expanded this now to 100 different products. The manufacturers are clamoring to have Amazon make a dash button for them. What's the point? Well, listen, this is from Amazon. This is the company that invented one-click ordering, right? Now their view is one-click ordering is just too much trouble, <laughs> right? Having to go online and click, geez. Instead, you just have this and whack the button. <laughs> Friction-free turns out to go much further than anything most of us would ever imagine. Okay. That's one part of the friction-free economy. New relationships, not just with customers, but also with workers and owners, which we'll get into. Another big differentiation. Companies are rethinking the role of capital. That's Tim Cook. And as you can see, he's in a Foxconn factory in China. Now, Apple, the world's most valuable publicly traded company, is unlike some other very highly valued companies of today in that it makes most of its money by selling physical products. It's not pure information. They sell these products, but they don't make them. As they say in the 10K, substantially all of our products are made for us by others. And Foxconn, of course, is the biggest supplier. Apple hasn't needed all that much capital 
to achieve its incredible valuation, even though it sells physical products. The role of capital in business is changing, and we're going to go into that more deeply, but it is really a profound change, another change. Companies create value in new ways. And you're thinking, Candy Crush is creating value? OK. Uh, but I put it up there for a reason. But how many people know Candy Crush Saga? And I want an honest answer, please. Yeah, OK. This is the one where people raise their hand like this. Yeah, I know. Can All right. Candy Crush Saga is a uh, game that you can play on your phone or tablet. You can get it for free. You can play it for free. How is this a business? It's a business because as you try to get to higher levels, it's difficult. And so if you get frustrated, you can buy new lives or levels. They have no meaning outside the game, but you do buy them with real money. All right. Seems ridiculous. The company that makes Candy Crush did an IPO two years ago, and that's when we found out that people were spending $2.3 million a day buying new lives and levels on Candy Crush. Okay. This company was sold to another company last year for $5.3 billion. All right. Candy Crush actually created a lot of value in a way that most, I mean, if somebody had come to you and said, I've got this great idea for a business, let me tell you about it, what would we have said? That's the stupidest idea for a business I ever heard. No, it wasn't. Companies can create value in new ways. All right. One other change in the friction-free economy. Companies measure performance by new metrics. What I've put up here is something we get every morning at Fortune. And you can see what it's telling us. The previous day's unique visitors online, page views, page views per visit, monthly page views, on-site video plays. We used to think we were a magazine. Fortune isn't a magazine anymore. It's primarily an online business, and these are the things we have to measure. These are where value comes from. But who's measuring them? Okay. Who's keeping track of them, and who is figuring out the value of them? To measure our performance, we need new metrics. And every business is going to have its own, and they're going to be different from this. But we got to know what the new metrics are. 